Hi everybody, welcome to BI Land. I'm sharing this video because a lot of clients have trouble accessing their data in Oracle database using Power BI. In this video, I'll show you how to connect to an Oracle database and provide you solutions for the recurrent issues. So here I have my Power BI. Let's get data, get data from Oracle database. We don't see it here more. Here it is, Oracle database. Let's see, connect and that's it. This is the error message you will get. Recommended provider is not installed. And even if I go OK, let's continue. It's not going to load the data into Power BI. It says that the recommended provider is not installed. You can continue with your current provider. However, it has been deprecated and may not work correctly. It means that you can't really load the data from Oracle database. Even if I, I put OK and then it's going to provide me the window where I can put my server name and eventually put my SQL statement here. But at the end of the day, it's not going to load the data into Power BI because I don't have Oracle client here. So now let's go to my other computer where I have installed version and see what's happening there. So cancel here. Let's switch to the other computer. So here I have my Power BI. I'm going to access to an Oracle database, get data from Oracle. It's not here. I'm going to go to more. It's right there. Oracle database connect. Here's going to want you server. Either you have TNS name, easily you put your TNS name, but you can put the whole server name, which means that you need to put host colon port and service. I have it here. So first off, start with your host name and then colon your port name and then instance or service. So I have it here. I'm going to copy this and put it here. So basically this part is the host colon port and the service name. And then I'm going to use import mode. And here I'm just going to put a small SQL statement, just a SQL code. Just put the name of the table that you want. This is much easier because here you can just put the name of a table, but definitely then you can adapt your code. I find this very handy when you use just select star from your table name. It's probably a table that is not huge so that you can easily access to it. But in any way, it's going to show you a preview of the table and then put OK. Now you see a preview of your table, either you load, but I would suggest you go to transform data. You go to transform data in the power query window. Now you can go to the advanced editor. Now you have your M code. This is basically the essence of getting data from Oracle database. You have your M code, which says that source is equal to Oracle database. Oracle database is the M language. And here you have your server, which is basically your host port and service or instance name. And then this hierarchy navigation tool, you just can leave it right as is. And then the most important part, query part. It says that query equals double quotes. And inside this, you can put all the SQL code that you have. So it can be hundreds of lines and it's in red color. It's different from the M codes because it's in the double quotes. So it's your SQL code. So you can just go there and put all you want in this area and then you are good to go. I'm going to hit down and probably you don't have the permission. Either you have already access to your database. So you have the permission of the accessing it. it means that you have provided the code to access your database if there is any code. So here you just edit permission. If you haven't put it already because I have put so it's not going to ask me. But if you haven't put it there, it will just ask permission to database. Basically, you're going to your codes to the database and then you hit run. Then it's going to load your table and then you of course, you're going to want to change the name here and then you load it there run again and then you have your table now why is that that some of my clients can't access oracle database the main issue is that they don't have oracle client basically you want to install oracle client to your computer and then access to the database for that you can check already in your computer if you have it so either you have a 32 bits power bi or 64 i suggest using 64 so here you can just type odbc because my installed Power BI version is 64. I'm gonna go there. I have already installed Oracle client. So if you don't have it here, it's normal that you can access Oracle database. So make sure that you have installed Oracle client. You can download this from Oracle website. You just need to type Oracle client for Windows and your Power BI uh, 64. 
one important thing is that you need to be careful about the versions sometimes because you have the other applications that you use in your working environment so some of the versions are the best for you so try to to adapt like from my experience my clients most of the time we have either 11g for some needs and also oracle client 12 for the power bi it works really well and we are all good for a lot of applications as well so i suggest you installing these or other version also if you're just using power bi some other versions more recent versions would work also but we are in 2024 and these versions work great for power bi desktop so you need to make sure about this which is in 64 which is the same as your power bi and another issue you might have is that you probably now that you solve this and you have access but all of a sudden if you install oracle sql developer sometimes it happens that by installing this it overrides some of the installation of the oracle client and you no more can have access via power bi if this happens you need to reinstall oracle client but in another folder in another directory so by installing sql developer if you lose the access via power bi which happens and sometimes we really don't know why it's just some issue and you just make sure that where the sql developer is installed you go out of there and you choose another path you don't choose the path that by default it proposing you when installing oracle client but the path that you decide yourself put it in another path than sql developer itself i think that's all i had if you have any other issues concerning connection to oracle database i'll be happy to hear it don't hesitate to post them in the comments i will try to help you and that's all i hope you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to share this video with others and also subscribe to my channel for the coming videos okay see you thank you very much bye bye